What's good? It's Kelvin Kane, publisher of the Magazine, founder of the membership, live on man Gambino. Is it Gambino man. ATL or is it just Gambino? It's just Gambino, man. <laughs> ACL is just to know y'all, let y'all know where I'm at. Okay, all right. So, um, I, had, I wanted to bring you in because, like, uh, you got a lot of stuff going on, watching the brand grow uh, from come a long way from Battlegrounds ATL. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I was just thinking about that the other day, man. I was looking at a flyer. <laughs> it randomly popped up on my timeline. Um, you know how they show like the throwbacks or whatever. Yeah. Like nine years ago, man, flyer it's just the flyer quality from where we at now is just like, man, I've been <laughs> doing this for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Um, so like uh yeah, nine years. Like it's been uh we started the 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 membership, like 10 going on 11 years ago. And so um, Battlegrounds was like one of those first events that we like, we were part of the test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, ran the um, RTP list for the event. Uh, since someone out there to perform. And so uh, it is like, uh, you come a long way since then. But for those people who are not familiar with you, let's start at the beginning of your story. So, where are you from? Um, born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia, you know, real Atlanta. I was born in Grady. Um, a lot of people don't know when I was born though, I did go to Mississippi Greenville for, uh, I think about like a year, uh, stayed with my father. Then I think we came back, um, to Atlanta, stayed down on Simpson road. I think with my mom, then I went to stay with my grandma. Um, but just to be realistically, I stayed on like all sides of town, you know, I was around. <laughs> yeah. That's <clears throat> That's the Atlanta, like, I was familiar with, like, because the people who from Atlanta, it was like, yeah, I've been all through this. <laughs> yeah, man. East like side, the north, north side, people. west side, yeah. downtown, yeah. all over, man. <laughs> just, just moving. Right. All right. So, what, at what point did you know that um, you had a desire to be involved in the Uh When I started making money. <laughs> nah, for real. Like I'm, just, I'm not even gonna hold you. Like when um, it was the moment. It was the moment when uh, I threw this mansion party with my cousin and um, Fly Guy DC. Uh, we threw a crazy mansion party like a long, long time ago. Um, I feel like I was just like a regular person at that point. I was just known for sports, um, known for my college. Uh, DC was known from his college, known from parties that he threw. Uh, my cousin, he was just he was like a rich kid, like he, his dad was in the NBA's big mansion, like a real mansion. We're not talking about, the, you know how people be having ask, houses. I'm about to ask. <laughs> this is a real mansion. <laughs> was this a, did they have a, a pool in the subdivision or a golf course? <laughs> they had all that, so, but the thing <laughs> no, is, you know, I think, you know how people be like mansion and you go to a big house? Yeah, it's yeah, like, bro, this is a big house. Big house. Yeah. No, this is like a mansion, acres, lake, yeah. Pool, basketball court, right. house humongous, four levels. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, no, a real mansion. And we we threw this uh, mansion party and went crazy, man. We went, we made so much money. We disturbed the neighborhood. It was like it was like literally Project X before the movie even came out. Right. Uh, and you know, we this is us fresh out of high school or whatever. Um, so when I got invited, around what year is this? Uh, who? This had to have been 2009. 2009. Okay. Yeah, like either 2009, 2010 latest. It could is not after 2010 because I was I graduated 08, uh, nine. I went to college. So yeah, I just say 2009. Um, I guess so. Since that day when we had that mansion party, and I just like literally seen what we did in the span of 24 hours. It was like a 24 hour thing, like a everybody shooting out texts, uh, Facebook. DMing certain girls, girls posting about it, and it just went crazy, man. We seen so much money, and we seen the influence, and then yeah, just from that day, like I was just thrown into something that I wasn't even ready for, but the money looked good to me, so I was like, shoot, right? You know, I'm like nine, eighteen, nineteen, making good money. I'm like, shoot, this is my life. Right. <laughs> I ain't got to clock in with nobody. I was working at Bojangles around that time too. I even said, "F them folks." I had quit. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what? I'm out of here, man. Right. Quit, old Jaggers. Yeah, like that. I walked out. It was like, they was like, I was, I was walking. They was like, you know, if you keep walking, you can't come back. I threw up the middle finger and everything. Like, I ain't coming back. Have you seen my Facebook? Right. I ain't coming back, man. 
I ain't, I'm done with all these chicken burns on me, man. I'm about to go. <laughs> all right, so, all right, so fast forward, you, um, you realize that, like, you just came in on the promotion side, party, do an event, and, and the shit instantly makes sense to you. So, what, what was the, what was the thought process? Because I know, like, one of the things with the party thing, because that was a one-off, like, initially, how did you plan on, like, what was your thoughts on formalizing that so it could be something consistent? Like, your first thoughts on, like, how can I turn this into consistent money now? Um, I think it, it went to me making that money and realizing, okay, it literally took me 20 bucks to do this. Right. And I made over two grand. So in my head, I was like, if I can turn 20 into two grand legally by just being myself and being a good vibe to folks, um, like, I want to continue to do this. So I got with some people, you know, with a certain group who kept me booked around the city, like as a host to where I can uh, leverage my brand, grow it around this time. You know, like I got with Hot 1079 with ET. Um, they already had battlegrounds in the past, but it wasn't it wasn't going anymore and so i got there et was like literally gave me the sauce he was like you know hot 1079 is number one radio station we the number one radio show um you know battlegrounds was already still a thing going on radio right. it just wasn't in the streets right. so yeah he literally gave me the platform and was like man like you know use our brand keep our keep our name alive in the streets and i just took that and ran with it and did it you know like from being on radio finding artists is nothing because you right. on a radio on the number one radio station in the world you saying Text this number to perform. Right, my phone blowing up. So yeah, just just taking that event and leveraging all the relationships with the artists from those years and keeping them in my contacts. And now, like, I it's so funny. I was I was on tour with uh, King Elway. It's like so many people that I know now <laughs> yeah. that used to be in my shows back then, just supporting, just to see where they at now. It's like, bro, it's just like it's a blessing for real. Yeah, yeah. Now that like so so from the party, like you. Transition over to How 1079 and then yep. uh, took over the Battlegrounds brand. And that's yep. when I first really connected with you when you was doing Battlegrounds. Yep, that's when I got intro introduced to the the industry. Yeah. Explain the potential. <laughs> <laughs> the industry. <laughs> yeah, you know, because like at that time, it's like you in it, but you're not really in it. You right. know, like I yeah. feel like. Um, when I got put into radio, I was accepted into the the industry. I, I wouldn't even say music industry at that point because I wasn't like an NR. I wasn't like a a manager. I was right. none of that. I was literally on air personality who did events. Right. That's not technically music industry, but you know, ET broke it down to me. It's, it's like Jason. No, exactly. Like yeah. you're you like you don't want to believe it, but you're in the industry now, right. my guy. Like you know, yeah. just accept it. Um. So like, yeah, like that was my first industry taste, and I just took it in and ran with it, man. Until I, I like, I learned so much from doing my events. Like with my events, it kind of like helped me with that whole A and R manager mindset mm -hmm. because I kind of like knew how I wanted people to attack my events or or being on radio. I know how they had to be on point with their interviews right. so in my head i'm like well this is how artists should act this is what they should do i know their managers because their manager is the one hitting me up to book it to book to do my events and stuff so building relationships so literally everything was just like handed to me man like my relationships was handed to me from being attached to hot 1079 at that time like just knowing so many people yeah yeah um there was something you said i wanted to um, pick up on Oh, man, what was it? It's going to bother me now. Hold on. Give me one second. Got you. You said something. <laughs> you went in a different direction. Um, oh, it is like, all right. So, with um, you're in the industry, my guy. <laughs> like, I hear you too. Like, <laughs> all right. So, it's like, what? And, and that's, all right. So, one of the things, like, for me, like it took me to realize someone pointed out that I'm I had to learn that I'm not in the industry. Uh you're in the industry. All right. All right. So here's the thing. Like, my guy Ty, we was outside of Apache. And he's like, yo, like, cause artists coming up to me, and I was like, and it was like, it was like, 
Mine's been doing it like at least 10 years now. It's like, yo, like, and, and when you get to that point, it's like, question, like, how do you stay, like, passionate about something after right. I do it for so long? And it's like, dealing with independent artists is very cyclical because they all come with the bullshit because they're, they're fresh, they're brand new. They don't know. Babies. Yeah. So they all are doing the same shit that annoys you. <laughs> that you have been through before. Yeah. <laughs> like, here's just a link with no context. Here's eight MP3 files, and I CC'd you and everybody else in my contact. So everybody has your email now. Like, <laughs> but um, but he asked this, and I'm like, and I, like I had to think on it, like, you know, because he's asking about me being passionate, still listening to music and all this stuff, and I realized like I, I'm not, like I don't like because mm. I'm not in the music industry. Mm. And it was like in that moment I realized I'm in the people industry because everything that I've I can see that. done since it was just like I'm just here to help people make money and turn this in a sense customer service that's it like i my my like i basically like this entire time with doing like the membership and the subscription stuff for me it started out like more i guess the term that they come up now is coaching mm -hmm. like so like talking to the members and and helping them get their stuff together but then like guiding them in the right direction is like okay this is how you actually want to plan your releases like and actually group work group can consultations and stuff like that but i've always been i've been more invested in the success of the individual than their music for sure so it's been plenty of times just like me and killer design is like it's artists that like are like making a living in photography and all these different things and I've been like yo you're really good at that why are you still rapping mm -hmm. like because of it. for me it ain't about how can we even though you can rap but this is the thing that you're good at you make money at and, and you can make money and you why love not doing go it. hard on something that you really get monetized from yeah yeah, yeah for sure so for me my thing is I'm on a, uh, I, I measure success and happiness so if, if this is like the whole thing is if you get people to that space so when you, when you said that, kind of stood stuck out to me because people look at me as I'm in the music industry, but in my head I'm not. Right. But it's like the same way everybody look at you. You're in the music industry. Right. But in your head, you still I'm not like, really. Nah, I feel like I'm fifty fifty. Yeah, because it's like because they all they intersect and they overlap. Right. Because you're you're radio. Right. Like and there's a whole bunch of radio stations that don't play music. Right. <laughs> So it's like, but then you're in like the event promotion. So that kind of hospitality and it's like the things that you learn from doing event promotion with managing personalities. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Can, can you speak on like, just cause I know at that time, I like many stressful nights. When do I go home? <laughs> yeah, for sure. What were some of the lessons that you learned uh, from from managing personalities and dealing with the artists and the managers and like the venue owners and stuff from from the times of doing battle. Uh, man, I had a, a a crazy life, bro. Like, I just start with let's just start with venue owners. Right. Um, I've been in places. I don't know if you remember. Uh, is it Asylum? Yeah. It was so when we was doing Asylum. Uh -huh. It was a brand new venue. Um, white guy. Uh, and he was new and he, he didn't have no type of traction in his building. And when we started doing battlegrounds, shouting it out on the radio, blah, 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 you know, everything was copacetic. Everything was good. You know, like I'll pay him my money on the back end. And then when we started booming and really making money, it's like when he started doing drugs, everything changed. <laughs> Everything changed. It was like it was like the booger sugar was on ten with him. Uh, the sound was East Atlanta. East Atlanta. Yeah, East I, Atlanta. You know, I love that. I love that. Man, man it was and the I best. Could never figure. I was like, I was like, I they rated it. Here. They they rated his. Oh. And he was. He had. He had. He had some other stuff going on at that point. Uh, okay. So we had got him going. You know, because our events was going. I think we was doing it like every Monday, low key. Yeah. I don't. I don't really remember, but I know it was, I it was either every Monday or every other. That I came to that. I was really the only. I was only the only hip hop uh, person doing something in there. Okay, event. so it has been your event. Yep. Like and every other because I like I would be over in East Atlanta Village when I started. Like, all right, we gonna start doing some events. Yep. And I would look for that. It's like it was a spot. Yep. I was the only person doing hip hop events in there. Um, 
And like, yeah, just even with the venue owners, sometimes when the money start like becoming a lot and the, the, the traction of amount of people that start coming in, start switching up on you, want to raise the price, start, like it just started becoming weird. So that, that was one thing. And I've done, I've dealt with that with a lot of venue owners is like, I come in, they really don't have no traction going on and they building for real. And then when I start coming, bringing my crowd and then my crowd is like a entertainment crowd. So of course other people are going to see your yeah. venue. They want to book it now. So it just, it just, it just became weird with me. So I moved from that venue, went to another venue dealing with artists and managers um it's been it's been a a long road i feel like i've learned how to like control control my energy and and how i run my events a little bit better so it's easier for me now but back then of course like people don't really know who you are they feel like they this person they they need to go ahead of this person mind you these these be the artists who be so big but only come with two people so it's like now you weighing out i got this artist over here who paid me Right. Who came with 30 some people right. compared to somebody who think that they're talented and they're this big star who came with nobody, barely pro- promoted the event, want all eight people in free, there are two people. Um, and but they want to rush and yeah. you know, outdo this I'll person. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Run my show. And you know, like so like <laughs> over the times I just learned how to uh to play those out a little bit more. You know, I feel like I've done less uh I do less like quote unquote, trying to get headliners because when you put that title headliner on there, people feel like a little bit way more special than they need to be, even though they might be on the same level as the other people that's on the show. So uh, I've learned to just like, you know, work through that, um, make ma- manage the time a little bit better. Um, but everything is still not perfect, man. The event world, nothing is really perfect for real because at the end of the day, we're dealing with human and we're dealing with real life stuff. Traffic might be crazy. Uh shoot somebody might be something might happen somebody can't make it or somebody is like five people late so it's throwing the show really behind you don't want to put your headliners on early so like yeah it's 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 been a long journey and the point that i'm at now is like it's so smooth because my team helped me out with everything um the majority of the artists they pull up with the people they supposed to i have been still dealing with a little issue of people saying that they're gonna perform and uh either pull out or don't show up um but we got something for that we got something for that now um but yeah so that journey has been long and i'm happy that i'm at the point where i'm at now where it's just like it's a breeze to me like i can throw an event and have 200 people easy right you know in in like two weeks of promoting it so, so and, and that's what i want to get into because it's like the battleground ran its course mm-hmm. and like as as that was like i want to say dying out Mm-hmm. But it transitioned because I remember um, talking to me about the uh, Meet the Underdogs. For sure. The vision for it in the kind of the inception when you were still doing battle. For sure. Um, so how was that that pivot? Like, was it- So the pivot really was the campaign ATL. Right. Me and my business partner started, uh, my old business partner a long time ago. Uh, she actually came up with the name, the campaign ATL. Mm-hmm. Um, but of course... I was like the face because I was on radio. I knew I had all the contacts, all the resources, buildings, all that stuff. Um, she just more so handled the back end and make sure stuff was good. Um, so took that brand and was building it up. But something in my soul was like, it's, this is ours, but I need to have something of mine. Right. So within that brand, I created Meet the Underdogs mm-hmm. and just started doing my own one-off event. So I wasn't splitting all my profits with my business partner, you know, it was more so like, nah, I want to have something myself. Right. Um, so the campaign, we helped the campaign ATL get big, but in the midst of that, I still was able to do a runoff event that was called Meet the Underdogs. It wasn't even, a, it was a brand, but it wasn't like a brand of like how it is now. You know what I'm saying? It was just an event under the campaign ATL. Um, but when I cut sides with that brand, it was literally like, what I'm gonna do now? And it was like, shoot, I got this name, Meet the Underdogs, it's pretty cool. Let me take that and run with it. And shoot, from there, it's been about it's been about five years now. Um, I had my my five year show was at the top of this year, um, and we had many artists: Meg Thee Stallion, Lotto. Um, shoot, we got Sunny the Rapper now. It's just so many dope artists that I've seen in these last five years that have touched our Meet the Underdog stage and just rock with our brand. Um, 
So yeah, I'm 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 happy with what we're doing and we got so much more to go. Um, like, you know, the brand was more so about performances and stuff. I didn't change it over to kind of like artist development. Um, and I want to get into more like digital content. Next year we're gonna be doing more like digital content because if you could tell, like, people don't really value shows like that no more. Like People love my events. Like my events is better than most most people who throw stuff. My, the vibe, all that be better. That we gonna come back to that. <laughs> but people don't people don't value shows like how they used to. So like, and when I say people, I'm not even talking about the artists. Like the artists, consumers. the consumers, yeah. they don't they don't really value it no more because money isn't the same. You know, spending twenty dollars to come in a venue, at least thirty dollars a drink. Parking, gas, like it's a lot on people, and I totally understand. So the, the the event stuff is different. On top of that, like other people don't value it because we're just in a digital world. So now we need to take meet the underdogs and do more so like content creation, interviews. Uh, I ain't gonna say the, I hate the hanging mic stuff. Like only person, I, <laughs> only person I really rock with is my boy Aze because he started it. And I remember when he started it, man. I was bringing artists his way. I loved it. Um, you know, it's it's some platforms that I rock with, but I'm over the hanging mic stuff, so I'm not gonna do nothing like that. That was the thing, like, so we do the purple, purple sweet. Where there's no mic hanging. Yeah, right? for sure. Like, no, yeah, man, I can't, I can't like, do it. <laughs> <laughs> but I like, I like, oh, you still I'm like, nah, right? I can't do it, man. <laughs> there's mics everywhere. These mics falling. <laughs> right, right. And and the crazy thing about it is, like, even with me, the underdogs, I I started like the whole when we did the digital cipher. Shit, I I started the digital cipher shit probably like six years ago before mm -hmm. people were really on it. I just didn't stay consistent with it. Right. And I always beat myself up for that. Yeah. Like, bro, I could have. I, I feel like I still am ahead of people about right. doing things because I've been doing events. I've been knowing these artists. Right. I've been creating certain stuff. Uh, it's just like certain stuff that I didn't stay consistent on. Right. Um, but I stay consistent with my shows. You know, because that was the real bread winner. That's that's what helped me pay my bills. That's what, you know, helped me take some of that money to invest into certain artists that I right. work with. Um, it helped me get more relationships with label A&Rs, uh, managers. So I just like honed in on that a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm trying to take it and just do more like digital content so we can get that Instagram following up a little bit more so we can, you know, monetize the brand overall and make money all over. No I don't want it to just be like, yeah, you performed at my show. Yeah, you met this and r this other dope artist. The vibes was good that night. And that's just what it was. I want it to be really like, all right, you did the show. You got the content, all this. I mean, I'm, if you ask me, man, I gave the recipe. But I gave the recipe. People watch me out and I know they do. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, this is not even no shot at nobody. People watch me, the underdogs, and be like, oh, we want to do that. And we're gonna do it our way, you know. Like, but at the end of the day, we the underdogs been doing it. The artists that they've been, they talking about, we've been worked with. Um, and yeah, now I'm just trying to get it more so on the digital side, where the content can last a little bit longer. Right. And then, like, <laughs> it's funny. Like, one of the things that you mentioned is like, like the with the digital cipher, and just like these things, because uh, we be having these conversations just in terms of watching how the industry moves or like you do something and then other people pick up yep. and run with it. Right. And it's like, feel like maybe it's a missed opportunity or like to have regret about it. Um, like that's one of the things like for me, like we're doing this like, it's like so much stuff that we've done and we started doing, but it was like, for me, it was like most of the stuff that I do like not even to make us like it's like like genuinely do this shit for the culture yeah no for sure i knew shit that i wish was around when i was young and rap right for sure like, oh man i wish it would be so cool if i could get a beat from zaytoven and then we all get to rap on it and see who got the best song so right i reach out to zaytoven and put together that opportunity right like, i reach out to people and get features and all this stuff and it's like because i thought it would be something cool to do for Come to artists for all these things. And then you see other people like pick up on up. And now everybody's doing open verse challenges. And everybody's doing, and it's like this thing. And it's like to like, I, I would compare this to what I would always tell my clients as artists. Like everybody would like to, in that area, I want to change the game. And then complain about people fighting. Right. That's what changing the game looks like. Right. Cause you do something that everybody 
Uh, yes, I am. Right. And then now it now it becomes the norm. Right. And so it's like it's like speaking to some of the stuff that you've done and some of the events and the way that you put your events together and things like that, how it kind of changed the norm or changed the expectation even of the artists that come out. Mm-hmm. This was like this. Mm-hmm. Like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I be, I be getting, I, <laughs> I woke up to a text this morning and somebody talking about they went to somebody event and it was like, bro, it's just, it ain't, it's nothing like yours. I'm going to just be real, you know? So like, I get that a lot and I appreciate it too because, you know, like I, I do, and I'm not one of those people that's like knocking these people at all because I feel like outside of my brand, I for artists. So you think I want my artists is always performing at my stuff? Yeah. No, I want them to go to your stuff. But if they're going to go to your stuff, I want it to make sense. I want a crowd there. I want them to be treated right. I want y'all stuff to be organized. You know what I'm saying? Like, like we should be getting to the venue and you know, we sent the song three, four days ago and the DJ saying they ain't got it or like just it should be little small stuff, you know, like and I just feel like some people, they should be doing stuff just to say that they're doing it instead of like doing it for a reason. Right. You know, I'm doing this because I want to find new talent. I want to. I want to have a stage where literally my lineup's so lit that this one artist can connect with another artist who probably gonna be major and they become friends and that just help them elevate to a whole nother level. It's A and R. Like people not really bringing on no real A and Rs and DJs to their events. Ain't nobody. Ain't nobody important of importance there. At my events, you're gonna meet somebody. It, it's gonna be somebody who might. You might get on that stage and tear it down, and somebody might come up to you and be like, "Yo, I want to work with you." Right. You know, so. Yeah, this is a little difference, man. This is, this is a difference. That's all I'm saying. It's a difference of the original quality and just the people who just trying to do it. Right. It, and I, I guess that, and I, I would say that all comes down to the why. Like, because with yours, like, you're, and I, I would even somewhat in when we do our events during South by, uh-huh. uh, and I pick up off of something else that you said, like, I never like, I don't say never, because when I first started, we had some more and open. I would feel like I'd fly, but then I started like, yo, this is where I want to showcase the members from our site. So, um, like, when I started my bit during the South by, it was because, like, I saw the South by really wasn't, wasn't rocking with urban media, black owned media. Like, so I was like, yo, we get a venue, and like, I invited like a whole bunch of um, blogs and media. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't have to set up, mm-hmm. and he's here, and let them put artists on stage. Um, so we like we, artists get paid and get on stage too, but we just did it where it was like a sponsorship. So, but then after like um, after it like really grew, I wanted to just like yo, we had too many people, here, right? And I want to be selective, and I was like, so I end up just like we're just gonna only put we're gonna pick fifteen people that'll rock for free, and so as from, they, from there it was like. We're not, we're not even like this year we're doing like next year for 2024, we're doing 10 artists perform free round trip travel two nights out there. Oh, wow. What they got to do? That's crazy. I need to, uh, I need to, I need some information on that. That's crazy. That's crazy. But that's the whole thing. Like that's the whole, with the whole premise of the, all right, sweetie. So, okay. <laughs> that's the whole premise of everything with, is to be able to create these opportunities for people and to remove the barrier free very entry for people who have the talent work right and so but the whole thing for me and my mentality was when we started doing this i stopped like booking like the more established artists yeah um, no for sure because i didn't want it to take away from the people that you're presenting for sure and so we like this year like even just an example like our our sound stage like we had the, the making the compound so we did five events we only put 40 acts on stage mm-hmm. and this is we have upstairs and downstairs mm-hmm. and the patio, like, mm-hmm. so, so it was like on average like 10 people per per um but we drew out over 3,000 people right and it was like but and everybody dark. the energy was good because it wasn't that clout chasey like everybody was just in there working and but even on the fan tip, like the people who like were there was there. Like if someone came to see this artist, then they would they it wasn't like I'm here because Drake's here. Right. Like I'm here because this person's this celebrity's here, so I'm here for clout, not because of music. For sure. And so like that's one of the things like I would say, like, even with um like 
your shows the and the show that you've been a part of, I've always felt like uh, you were very passionate about making sure that the artists got a look and the artists that you worked with, like, I would, I would question, I'm like, does this nigga manage these motherfuckers? Like, yeah. cause you didn't be so bad. You know, we didn't have some conversations. I'm like, yeah, bro, yeah. this shit gotta make more sense. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, I just go hard. I just go hard go for hard, I go bro. hard for the people that uh, you know I believe in for one, and then I feel like if their music is good, because one thing about my events is I really like screen and listen to the music, right? Because the music gonna tell me everything I need to know. You probably ain't even gotta know how to perform all that good, but if your music is there, that energy in the building it, from your music is gonna drive people to rock with it. You know what I'm saying? And you can develop from there because I want people to be like, yo, I remember dude from Gambino event, like he really ain't know how to perform like that. And then when they really get into that zone and that, that that confident level in their career, people can be like, yo, like I remember when I see him at yeah. Gambino event. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, no, I'm big on I'm big on making sure that I'm a part of the process with these artists. Cause like I said, outside of the shows, it's developing them. Like I'd be working with some of these people behind the scenes that people don't even know. I'd be I'd just set interviews up, other performances beats or you know they they can't get in touch with a producer i'm calling and putting a person on the phone with them like it's so much that i do behind the scenes that people don't even know because they just think that i do shows of course people know that i do i like i manage artists and i do stuff but like i do so much that people don't even know right. you know because i really try to engage with the artists that i feel like i want to attach to my brand i want to just do more than be like i right, come perform like no nah, i want to when when meg the stallion before meg the stallion blew up when i saw her going up I hear her people, I hear her mom and some of them, shout out to uh, Dredge, cause she the one who who linked it. Hear her mom was like, I want y'all to come to Atlanta. I'm, I wanna set up radio interviews for y'all. Like, you know, it ain't just gonna be about performing at, performing at my show. I believe her, I see the motion that she got going on, but I want her to come do radio interviews. I want her to come do a photo shoot. You know, I'm trying to do as much stuff as I can for her so Atlanta can know who she is before she come perform. Right. No, I rock with that. And, that, and that's why I say like, I think that it's one of the things that differentiates you and just people who like are genuine is like, like when I see like you're going hard, like I, I know you probably ain't got nothing to do with this situation, but the way that you go hard made me be like, oh no, maybe you're getting on the back and maybe you got some publishing on it. Like, but it's just like, you, but then you turn around because there's so many people that Everything is just like this. This thing is just a hassle. Mm -hmm. So sure. it's like, how many people can I get to pay me for this event? Right. Like, I yeah, no, it's definitely not a hustle for me. I, I put my homies on. Like, I'll, I'll literally sit and tell myself, who are the 12 dopest people that I know right now that I can just put on? Because I, I don't never try to do more than 15 people performing. Right. Uh, so I'll be like, if it's going to be 10 or 12, it's going to be 10 or 12 people who I know can bring out a decent crowd and they're going to rock that stage. And I'll let, probably let like three or four other people pay me because at the end of the day, like we have, we still have artists out there who want to get in the rooms with A&Rs or certain people like these certain people that I book, their managers might be somebody of importance. Right. And you know, you want to be in those rooms to network with those folks and it, it is pay to play. I don't care what nobody say. Sometimes you do got to pay to play. There's nothing wrong with it. I yeah, for sure. I think that's really like, like, and then we did a whole episode on the podcast about this, is like people people stigmatize doing good business. Yeah, for it's sure. Like, like, it's like the dude taking the chick out on a date, like, I ain't thirsty trying to, like, like you know, that's like, that's right. like a normal relationship. Right, right, right. <laughs> trying to get to know somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So it's like, but it's, it's like, pain to, oh, it's pain to play. It's like, you mean that there's an audience somewhere, right? right? So you're spending money on getting seen, getting right. your product, which is your music and your brand, putting it in front of people. Like that, that doesn't make sense for sure. You. Like it's, it's like it's literally you're coming to gain everything, and then there's nothing for us to gain outside yeah. of probably taking the L because y'all not bringing nobody. Yo, if you if you've been to the mall and they were out handing out samples or taking surveys, you don't think that they had to pay to be in that right. mall to do that to right. engage exactly. with the people. That Simon and Simon Simon brought there. Like, exactly. And so, like, for me, that's what, like, like having to break this stuff down into just, like, like just regular terms, like, remove this music stuff and the feelings of, 
oh, I'm an artist and everything's probably, you're a capitalist. Mm -hmm. Like, you're in business, you're trying to make money. Right. And so I think that's one of the things where the, for our podcast, the artists are shitty people. That's the name of the podcast. And so it was like, sure, like, we having these ongoing conversations and really often is showing artists the other side of the story. Because often you just see it from your perspective. Like, yeah, not knowing. When you, you don't know that. Like, they all think 360 deals don't make sense until they have to sign something. Right, like, right, right. The second that they have an artist that they want, it's like, oh, so you don't pay for this and pay for this. And then when they go do a show, you don't get none of that money. Right. And it's like, oh, so that's what 360 Right. It's <laughs> like, yeah, no, nah, I mean, that's that's a whole nother conversation. I I hate people who just try to, because, you know, I was on both sides, bro. I've worked for an independent label that put people in 360s, and it's like, I understand the artists who got assigned the 360, but it's like, literally, bro, if you don't have no leverage, if you don't have nothing going, if you don't have a dime to your name, no followers, no reach, like, people really don't know you, and these people are literally putting their, I don't give, they give you a 5K, I don't give, damn, they give you a $500 advance, and they're still paying for your music videos, they're paying for your travel, they're paying for, like, so much stuff, it's like, literally, they're taking a 50-50 risk on getting that back. I've invested into artists like that's why I said I don't spend like I'm one of those managers now that I really don't even spend my money on artists no more because I've been that guy spending money and it's like they either quit or they is just something happened and it's like all my money gone. That's why I don't matter. Yeah, man, it's like uh -huh. I can't be the guy who doesn't spend. Yeah, exactly. Because it's like if because if something has to get done, and it's do like it. I'm gonna do it. Like ah, uh, you got a great opportunity. It's like ah, uh, you need to try. Like, then again, right, how much is the flight? It. It's a debt investment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, I stopped doing that. So, like, I, I hate yeah. people who try to down downplay a 360, don't even know what a 360 is, don't know how it works. How about if you do sign a 360, like, how about you take that opportunity to make it the biggest opportunity you can, make these folks take money back and renegotiate? Right. People don't even think about that. They don't right. think about no no renegotiation at right. all. Like, you know you can do that, right? But, you know you can blow up and be like, I want to renegotiate. But this is, I guess this is the the core thing, and I think we talked about, we just talked about trust and stuff, and like you said, you know, at the interview, trusting yourself, uh -huh. trusting yourself, and it's like one of the things that's kind of coming to accept and acknowledging is artists don't trust themselves. Like, to oh yeah, no, nah, for sure. Really like, the action, so you don't think you're going to make this money. Oh yeah, no, nah, for sure. That's why you're trying to get the biggest advantage. You don't think it's any back end. Money. It's a finesse. It's like that's that's it's it. A like, finesse now. So you're telling me, so because you don't want to pay me five hundred dollars for my service, but you're willing to give me ten percent of this record. Oh, that let me know. You don't think that ten percent of this record is going to equal five hundred dollars, right? And so, it's like in the actions, you get to see how much faith people actually have in their career. It's mm -hmm. like you got the the public face of. Yeah, I'm the hottest, littest da -da 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 in the city and all that. You know, you know what it is. Oh, yeah, for sure. They, they all in your face. But then when it comes to, well, here's the number, hit me up. I'm doing another one in three months. So this is what you need. This is the person you need to email mm -hmm. and no follow through. Mm -hmm. And like when it comes to actually sitting down and doing the business. Yeah, for sure. Um, one of the questions I have for you, like, because it's like everything has a season. And I think it, uh, like you said, in between, I forgot about the campaign, ATL. So it was like, there was a campaign, ATL, because we also did some stuff with the campaign, ATL, too. Uh, what was the, like, that transition from, like, because I know you had a business partner in the end, and then that dissolved, and then you went on and, and picked the, the, Meet the, underdogs. Uh, the underdog brand up, made that the primary brand. Um, what what caused that to come to an end and what lesson did you learn from that? Uh, I mean, I think what caused it to come to an end was like my business partner was, we were in a relationship together. Okay. Uh, so of course, you know, when a relationship goes south, everything goes south with it. <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> so I'm going to negotiate this publishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like I still want, to, I still want to like, you know, make it happen, but it was just like other little small things that I was like, nah, you know, like, and I had to, I literally, it, it was one day where it got real bad. I was so mad. Like I was so mad, so mad on some hate type deal where I took, a, I took about a week to myself and I really told myself and I had to remind myself who I was. It was like, 
low key. I'm 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 the one. You know what I'm saying? So it just later I went back and was like, you can have all of that. I really don't even care. I'm about to do something over here. I'm about to take me to underdogs and do what I gotta do. So um that's literally what that was. What I learned from it was, yeah, don't go in business with a lover. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> doing the same thing. No, not doing it. Well, Sorry. Yeah, man. Nah, man. Uh, don't do it. So like I, I told myself, you know, like my business or what I do is gonna be strictly um business. You know, like if I bring on another partner, it's gonna be a partner who can add just as much value to my company as that I'm bringing into it, you know? And not saying that my old partner didn't, you know what I'm saying, or whatever, but I just know me no, personally. But, and But here's the thing, because it's um, like the same thing, like we're talking about artists. We're an artist who has a name, but brought two people in. Mm-hmm. But they're like they value their name differently than the thirty people in the payment that this other person yeah. made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's sure. like everything is really subjective. But then you you toss in like the relationship aspects and that personal dynamic. Yep. So you want to treat them a little bit better than the person who yeah. paid and brought thirty people. But realistically, in my head, I'm I'm level minded. Like how does, it really don't even make sense for me to treat you a little bit better than this person who spent money and really did what they were supposed to do. It don't make sense because at the end of the day, I might I might go with them over you now right. because they proved something to me, you know? They proved that they're willing to invest. They proved that they're going to promote and they have a following of people that's going to come out. So low-key, I still want to go rock with them a little bit more because it's just something that they're doing that you don't really go hard for that you're doing, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, for sure. But... Yeah, just to go back to that, man, uh, the lesson that I learned was like, you know, just make sure I come into business with uh, people who can bring a little bit more value to what I'm already doing, because that's just going to help things elevate a little bit more. Um, and just remember that who I am, you know what I'm saying? That, that was the biggest lesson. Remember who I am, because I'm a creator. Like, and when I say creator, like I can literally think of something in my head, put it down and do it. And when I see it go good, like the people going to follow the wave after that. So manifest yeah yeah yeah, for sure no problem so with the um meet the other dog brand i know you said you want to pivot into um doing more content for next year putting the pen in that we can pin out mm-hmm. you said people not not even the shows anymore mm-hmm. right and i made a post maybe a month ago and it was um it was referring to music festivals as like the like music festivals are doing to concerts what Spotify did to albums. And yeah. it's like yeah. pull all of it and aggregate into one thing for a low price. Mm-hmm. Now I don't care about that. Mm-hmm. You know, so I can spend four hundred dollars and see all the artists that like, why am I gonna go to the forty five dollar show where they bring Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. Nah, I definitely agree. And also just just enlightening on that a little bit more, like even from the artists now, like you got artists who might have a homie to be like, yeah, come out to Rolling Loud. I'll put you on my set or, you know, paying $1,500 to perform at Rolling Loud. And it's like, those people are already there. You know what I'm saying? Like they're not, they're not there for you. So I don't want y'all to start coming out here thinking y'all can charge people 20, 30,000, 10K for a performance because those that's not that those people are not your people. I don't care how, and, and let's just be real, them kids out there, they already on drugs, they lit, they gon' if your beat hard, they gonna turn up regardless, bro. Don't let that go over your head. You can smoke and mirror whoever you want, but you can't smoke and mirror me. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that's another one. Like it reminded me when uh when I first started the magazine, like year two, like everybody like I was running the people. Yeah, I'm in double XL. So yeah, man. I'm like, huh? I'm like a little posted. I know what you pay. Yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. <laughs> People be trying to come with me with the cap, like I don't know. Like, bro, I know I know somebody, but I ain't gonna say no price, but I know how much you paid to get on there, bro. Like, you can't cap me down, man. You you trying to show me this rolling out footage, bro. Like, that crowd was already there. They're not there for you, buddy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, bro. Then you pay, like, and then it what be killing me is like. And, and Rolling Loud is a big brand, you know right. what I'm saying? But it'd be certain artists, you might pay 
$2,500, $1,500 to go perform, and it still might be 15 people out there in that crowd because they don't care about you. Right. You know what I'm saying? They they all the way on the other side trying to see Gunna or whoever yeah. they really paid to come see. Yeah. Whole time you performing in front of 15, 20 people, but you yeah. pay, you ain't complaining about paying $15, yeah. $2,000, but somebody in your hometown saying pay $100 yeah. or $200, you looking at them sideways. Yeah. But you don't want to. You don't want to yeah. build in your city. You want to go somewhere else and look like the man for fifteen people. Yeah. So crazy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you this. Like so, this is one of the things I had to learn. Like when I we doing my events during South by. Oh. Like the first few years, like the first my whole thing. The first year, I was just like, I just don't want to take a loss. For sure. I take a loss. I'm good because I just wanted to do this for media. So that was the thing. So like first. Uh, year like drink either until a motherfucking artist did a dispute on they shit <laughs> I was like I hate you motherfucker yeah man <laughs> the wig bro I like the no, wig and the cap like, like and this was the, what made him the insult the injury is like I really like this artist's music so the package was it was $250 uh -huh. you go on the promo CD you did a thousand pro CDs say yeah Personal flyer, name on the man flyer, tweets all the different promo. Stuff that costs. For $250. Stuff that costs. I put him as the first song on the CD. I liked your song. Mm -hmm. like, Yo, this motherfucker missed his performance because he decided to just drive up there the day of. Oh, man. So, so pro not proper planning on his end. He wanted his money back. Worse than that. <laughs> this didn't get up there late. And it was like, it's like, don't even worry, you missed your performance time. But I got you. I got Cino doing a beat set right now, and I'm interviewing Cino. So I'm going to get you on right after Cino. Nice crowd still in there. I think fucking um, side to side, just left out, like, and then KCAP, you know, it was just coming in. Like, so it was nice crowd. Right. So Cino's finishing set, and I'm like, I'm calling this dude. I'm like, what does this thing have? Uh -huh. <laughs> he left. This nigga didn't left. So now it's like, all right, we just gotta keep it running. I'm just like, oh yeah, DJ no, for sure. Some music. For sure. And we ain't doing nothing now. We just like playing music and networking and stuff. This nigga show up like seven o'clock. The event's over at seven o'clock. Right. He's like, oh, I had to go change clothes. I'm like, yeah, man. What? Yeah, man. <laughs> no, that be a, see, and that be the that be the thing about events that people don't even know, man. Like when it comes to like artists, like I've I've been I had situations before where. Like nice crowd, art perform or whatever. Um, I remember the dude, the dude, like my my people, my people told him to wait because we was interviewing people. He's supposed to get his interview or whatever. Told him to wait. Dude left. I go outside because I'm like, where he, my team looking for him. So I go outside. He on the phone complaining, talking about saying, yeah, I ain't do my interview. Mind you, he's just performing in front of a nice crowd. I'm like, dude, they're they're calling you, waiting for you. Nah, this is good. I don't even want it. I get, I, I guess, like you know, at this point, I don't even know what to say because me, I'm not good with grown men having emotions about like little small things. Like you gotta wait five minutes for your interview, my guy. Like you're mad about that. Like go, man, go ahead about your business, bro. That's that's the like that's one of that's I, all right. So we had this conversation. So like this is like one of those things. It was dealing with grown. Mm -hmm. Emotional trauma. Oh man, it's who the street mentality. Oh, not the combo. Yeah, not the combo. Combo crazy. Like, oh, I'm throwing that shit somebody out here. Like, yeah. like, the combo is crazy. <laughs> I can't even deal with that one. Bro. I ain't deal with that one in a little minute. Yeah. Man, I can't deal like, with those. Like, I can't deal with it. And so that that was one of the things for me with what we do, like with. Uh, our brand and everything like like just being straight up like our platform ain't for street artists for sure it's like and i and i said the reason why i say that is not that we that we shun street artists oh yeah no for sure but i don't do the things to cater to street artists like so i don't do all the cap i don't do all the like like i'm talking business to you out the gate like even like yeah right no that's a no smoke right right like like Lose a lot of people like that. Right, right. But it's like, I want people who want to come in here and record. And work. Get yeah. to work. So it's like, 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 yo, we give you an extra half hour, we do this, you get beats, you get all this stuff. And we got 
production facilities to actually help promote it. Like, if I like a record, I'll send you somewhere to perform it. So, oh, like, yeah, no, I for sure. See it. Like, one of our uh, first episodes, like, he had his record. I love it. I was like, oh, I hit it up. He's performing, like, the next week somewhere. And so, it's just like, you'll give that up because you want to smoke. Right. All right. Cool. Right. I know what this is. Right. Right. <laughs> I already know where your mind said it. Yeah. So, so it is like, Having to deal with um, with that, especially when it comes to the performances, because it's a very time sensitive thing. Mm-hmm. And like we talked earlier, definitely time to sensitive. make you feel more like an artist than performance. So they're very vested. Oh yeah, for sure. To these however many precious minutes there are. Yeah, for sure. And so it's like like with dealing with those situations, like what's what's one of the craziest things that you've had to to deal with or talk someone off the ledge like when it was like what are we doing here <laughs> uh if i can think man because i like i said i've been doing it for so long and i've been dealing with so many artists it's, uh, and we can I, we can change the names to protect that right? yeah right <laughs> let's, let's, let's let's protect the innocent but honestly i can't i can't even i can't even tell you honestly because like, i feel like it's been so it's been so many from the times that I've been doing this. Mm-hmm. It hasn't been a lot as of recently because right. like stuff is just been, <laughs> like, in, like yeah, like, like things, the shows, the shows definitely do what they do. Um, yeah, that's that's a hard one off the top of my head because like I said, I can't I can't really think of a time because it's been my, my shows have been. All right, so I right, how about this? How about this? I don't, and I'll just go with this because I didn't. I don't know how people felt about the event. So I had did my second show in L.A. Right, right. Um, and the original venue that I had, you could smoke in it. So before, prior to that, I'm promoting 420. You could smoke all that yeah. stuff. Uh, and something happened with that venue, and they hit me two days before and was like, "Hey, we got to move. We have another venue down the street. We have to move it or whatever." Mind you, in two days. Most most of the people that's performing are from the West Coast, right? So now I'm having to hit air, all them. Thank God the venue was literally five minutes down the road, right? But when I get there, I'm I'm there. I'm happy. Cr- mind you, the crowd was nice, right? Can't smoke in the building, right? That one little thing changed the whole trajectory of my event because, like, I'm, when I tell you, like, my, my the first five people when they got their little big gas, <laughs> my the plug, my artist. <laughs> She's smoking big gas. They looking at me like, you can't smoke in here. So now I'm having to tell everybody, like, ah, put out your blunts. You can't smoke in here. Did they have a patio? Back, like- they sold. And then there was another thing. They, like, they didn't want nobody outside of their front door area or whatever. Okay, so they didn't have, like, an extra. Nah, it was like, literally, you either inside or you outside. And if you're outside, you can't be in front of our door building yeah. because we don't want too much attention on our right. building. So they need to go around the corner. But, you know, that's kind of hard to control. Tell, yeah, like, I, I can say I had about 100-some people, but a lot of artists was complaining because yeah, they want to smoke. It. Like, I promoted, promoted it. Yeah, yeah, so they felt some type of way about that. <laughs> Um, I booked a DJ. I booked a DJ. Now this DJ was supposed to be some lit DJ. Come to find out, he sent his little brother to DJ whole time. Cause not, mind you, I don't know who this West Coast DJ is. I just know somebody referred him, but he sent his little brother. They pulled an A count. You got boo <laughs> to DJ. This man, this man don't know how to get songs. He don't know how to mix. His wi- the Wi-Fi messing up on him because it's com- it's something wrong with his computer. It was just it was just like a, a headache on top of that. Like it was it was a great event. Like the, the people came out, right? But it was just it was just not how I wanted it to. And artists like certain artists was complaining because it's like oh, I can't smoke in here or like the crowd like majority of the crowd outside because they want to smoke. We on the West Coast, bro. They smoke out there. Yeah, it's legal. You got you got thirty some people outside smoking. You know what I'm saying? Look, trying to look inside to see the, at the people that's performing, but like, yeah, nah, that night was crazy. I feel like uh, a lot of a lot of artists was bitching and complaining because it was like, bro, like the people outside, nobody ain't seen me perform. It was like, look, dude, if you only knew what I had to deal with in the span of 48 hours to right. to get another venue and make sure y'all knew what was going on, and then getting here to them telling me it's no smoking in this building, though. It's like it's like so much that people just don't understand with events, man. And like I'm, I mean, like I said, the the event was good. I definitely took an L on it because you know, like a lot of artists who said they were gonna pull up, 
didn't pull up. We said they was gonna have a crowd. The smoking thing kind of like blew people because they really wanted to be inside smoking. And she honestly, me personally, if everybody, if all those people who were smoking outside was in that building, like it, I probably wouldn't have wanted to be in the building for real, for real. Because the building it probably fit like a hundred people. I had a hundred people, right? You know, so like everybody, literally, it seemed like everybody was smoking. Right. That would have been fire hazard. Right. So like yeah, so that was like one of the most uh, the recent. Things that I feel like, like just everybody in my ear, like I'm supposed to go on next, or uh, why we can't smoke, or blah, 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 the DJ horrible, like. And, and those are the things. Like uh, that's why I ask that because, like, like when artists don't understand, like especially even when the event goes right, like oh yeah, no, the, the event still was good. Everybody, like the people there, having a good time, like mm-hmm. even my most smoothest. On events, mm-hmm. it still be shit. Mm-hmm. It still like, and so you always gotta like uh, it, it, any little thing that comes up, and you gotta be ready to put out. Oh yeah, no, for sure. You definitely gotta you gotta uh, be able to be quick on your feet and know how to control your. Because me personally, I've, I've mastered controlling my uh, my attitude or like how I talk to people. Because I have people talk to me crazy. I had one event like uh, the sound guy had left and. One guy was performing or whatever, like the mic was going in and out, yeah. and he got mad and, and like and threw the mic down and was like, "Man, get my mic right!" Da, 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 da. Like started jumping. Then he came over to the DJ booth and tried to get in my face. And you know me, like I'm like I'm kind of like throwed off. You know, like people don't know I, I do MMA. Like I know how to defend. I I literally know how to fight. So like most of the time when people be trying to jump me off. It'd be like, come on, bro, let's like let's let's chill. Cause I don't even want to Yeah, I don't even want to get to that point and you're not tough. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like you, most of you most of y'all, y'all only tough because y'all got people around y'all. Yeah. But if it was like a one-on-one, bro, like we literally can do this right now. You know what I'm saying? So like I had an incident with the dude was just like he was just doing the most. And it's like, dude, like I understand that the mic, like it, it, cause it was one perfect mic and it was one that was going in and out. It was two right. artists, like it was both of them. Right. I'm like, dude, get the good mic that works. Right. Like you know what I'm saying? Do y'all do y'all not do y'all not know how to perform? One mic isn't working. Get the one that works when you're rapping, and let the other dude use the one that's going in and out. You know, so I, so when I'm looking at people perform, it just goes at the artist development. It's like, do y'all really know how to do this? Because right. like a, a polished artist would have been like, well, give me the good mic then. Right. And while while I'm doing my thing, about the show just now part of your show exactly. Like, like literally, you just let the crowd know that you're that you just yeah, don't know how to handle or yeah. or you're not composed. You know right. what I'm saying? Like so, like that was that was one of the another incident that I could say that really irritated me because it was like dude just tried to be so tough with me and it's like bro, let's don't get loud with me for one. And then two, like if you really want to do it, let's do it because all you got to do is just go back up on that stage, bro, and use the good mic, the one good mic that we do have. Go use it. Don't make no scene. Don't try to get tough with me. Don't do that. <laughs> it don't make no sense. And, and that's like, and that's the, like, with us uh, as, as event promoters and curators doing these events is like, just like, like I said, like, even with the podcast, just really showing people the other side of what's going on. So you, you're complaining about this one little thing where the simplest thing you don't even realize, like, like I'm and I I one of the things that helped me and I just started doing this, like when I would do like especially our stage doing Southbound, like I'm not giving you your performance time. Yeah, no, for sure. Like it's like, yo, for free. Like, right. Be in the building. Right. For sure. Like that's it. Like for sure. <laughs> right. For sure. Like, we ain't gotta go through all that. You you know when you perform after that person. person. Right. You perform. Be- Right. When you hear them go on stage, no, right. you're yeah, no, you ready. <laughs> like, you ready. Like, and like, because it's like, like, you'll have so many different things going on. Mm-hmm. Like, they don't understand, like, yo, the caterer's trying to find parking. There's an issue downstairs. Right. The, like, it'd be a million things. People texting and like, all right. this. And like, and you asking something that I gotta, I got like, I'm juggling all this shit. And you asking me to pick something up that you dropped. Right. And I'm like, I got too much shit. Right, right, right. right. And then they be mad that you ain't pick it up for them. Yeah. <laughs> but it's all a part of the learning it's process, like man. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But nah, it's 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 all a part of the process, man. I just like, and like you said, people don't know what's going on in the back end, but if they really And that's knew, why I got like extend grace to it. Like, yeah, like, like, for once sure. Again, if you if you knew what was going on. You wouldn't be here talking to me like exactly. about this bullshit. Nah, and you want to know the funny thing about it? It's been a few artists who uh who like, I'm gonna do my own show. 
They throw their own show, yeah. and guess what happened? Yeah. Don't nobody come. They don't make no money. Yeah. Uh, little small stuff be going wrong, and I, you, be, you see that they irritated because people on them. It's yeah. like, bro, it's not easy. Yeah. So if you think, so you, you, your head, if you want to pay $250, $100, whatever you want to pay to have a DJ already, to have a building already, to have literally everything you need just to bring people so you can get your content and show that you're performing, do that, bro. Because trust me, you don't want to go down that road where you're paying $1,000 for a venue. You got to pay security. You got to make sure you make a bar minimum. You got to pay a DJ. You got to make sure the, the event look good. You got to have a sound guy. So now you had $2,000, something some dollars. And, you know, you talking about some, oh, I'm going to pack it out. Ten people come because you really ain't got nobody. Ten people come, you only make $500 back. Let's just say you make $500 back. You take like a $2,000 L. You're going to be looking like, ah, oh, yeah, I need to go back to some of them open mics and build my fan base and like literally use somebody's platform to grow, you know? Good. Yeah, people don't know until they got to do it themselves. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's the that's the the, 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 the thing, like especially when you do a good job. Uh -huh. When you do a good job, people think it's easy because you make it look right. Like, because like, right. I've been, you know, we, you've been to the front and you see they under pressure. Like, like you see like they have, they compose your thoughts. Yeah. Everybody, man, like, like, I'm leaving early. Like, right. Know what this is about to turn Right, right, right. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. But then it's like, but like, when you're experienced in doing this stuff, you know how to navigate, you know how to handle the people with everything and it looks, even though shit don't go perfect, like making sure that everybody can know how to handle it a little bit better than the average person who's never done it before. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And, it, and it also helps you uh, keep the vibe in your event yeah. right as well. If you know how to handle those situations, like the night with the dude with the mic, like when I when I said what I said, it was like, because what I said to him, it made sense. Like everybody was looking like. Makes sense, nigga. Like, <laughs> like I, had, okay. you know, I just thought about my. I had one. I had one out of character moment during South by Southwest. Oh man, I know they be wild in South by too. Oh hell, yeah. Russ. Oh man, was he was like, a diva, huh? Man, Russ is always gonna be one. <laughs> I, I just feel like he was born like <laughs> born Russ. It's none of these babies in this paternity board, like <laughs> oh, man. Like, no, like um, my man Calvin put me on to him. Like it was like maybe a month before the event. No, it wasn't even a month. It may have been like a few weeks. Like I went over to opera and I, Calvin was over there and he was telling me about. It. And I was like, let me hear a song. And I was like, I thought with it. I put mm -hmm. on the show. Mm -hmm. And it was like, and that was it. Mm -hmm. Like, so I put him on the show. Um, did fly a lot of stuff. And uh, this is like maybe 2016. Okay. Yeah, so it's not Russ. He's working Russ. towards it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I like his music and I think he's dope. So I'm like, and Calvin put me on to him. Cosine. Cosine. You know, so yeah. I'm like, cool. Right. So um, I'm managing the show. So this was the year. Um, it was some cables or some shit missing. So like my DJ uh, couldn't plug up. He had to go all the way upstairs. I had to get other people's music. I had my whole shit set up. The person who was supposed to be running the uh, the, the list wasn't there. So I'm really doing everything dope. And so um, it's me. I want to say it may have been Cassius Kane was DJ. Okay, so it was me that's the homie. And Cassius Kane was DJ. And so I'm making sure everybody's taken care of. Everybody, like, we be a little bit behind on schedule. So, like, as soon as he walk up, talk to management, introduce, boom, we talking. I'm like, I know you got another event you're going to get to. What time is that event? What time you get to leave? Fuck when he's supposed to be performing. I'm going to make sure he perform, and I'm going to make sure you leave. You need to leave. Right. Just let me know the information. Club Douglas. Management gives me the information. Boom. We good. So, juggling and putting people on stage. And Russ, what am I doing? Like every time I get off stage, every time I move, like, what am I getting on doing? Like, I go upstairs, like, you know how you move, like, like upstairs, there's some stairs. You know how they got the rope, the velvet little thing. Mm -hmm. So I move that, it's the chain and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So you know you're gonna be up there. So I move mm -hmm. that, I run up there with my backpack up there with my laptop and all this stuff. I gotta move some files over. And then like I'm there and I'm, you know, rushing to move the files. 
It's like a hundred some people in here. I got the DJ playing the song. I know this shit about the end. And then like, what am I doing? No. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you doing? All of you upstairs? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I'm like, my boy was determined. Yo, yo I'm like, bro, I already talked to you, man. I'm gonna get you on. Right. right. What time you got? You gotta go over to the favor for it. You gotta leave me this time. I already got you. I got a whole bunch of stuff I'm doing. Right. So then I go back downstairs and um on getting everything together, the artist goes up, artist is about to perform. And I just tell this morning, he's gonna go up back to him. So put the artist up on stage, he's one of the members, and it's do so we perform it. And then it's like, we want Russ, we want Russ, like a little group of girls and people that came with Russ at time. And I'm looking at him like, man, you Right. And he's like, and he's like, <laughs> so I'm like, all right, y'all can leave. If you want to see Russ perform, y'all can leave because Russ ain't performing. And then just let let homie perform. Right. Like, because I'm like, yo, you fucking up my show. Like, I was like, I don't need this shit. Like, right. Right. I don't give a fuck. Right. Like, right. it's like, but I still like his music. So I, after I left, um, after the event, I hit Calvin up like, yo, I'm going to do an interview with Russ. We're going to give him in the next issue. But it was like, he ain't want to do it at that point. No, nah, he didn't want to yeah, do it. I'm already He's knowing like, how that's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That man felt disrespected. Yeah, but I'm like, but but it, after a while it get annoying. After a yeah, while, like, like, bro, I'm telling you that I got you. All you got to do is trust me. Yeah, <laughs> all you got to do is trust me. Like, so it's like, but it be like those like 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 you tell that story just made me feel like, oh shit, I got one of them. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. And people don't understand like sometimes when you become annoying, it's like. It's slick makes somebody want to be annoying back to you because it's like, yeah. man, like clearly you see us busy, you see us working, we this got you. That level of being inconsiderate, that level yeah. of inconsiderate. Yeah, 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 yeah like, for sure. Like, bro. Because it's like, it's like, it's like if you're in a studio recording and you got, let's just say you got 10 minutes, like 20 minutes left of your studio session, but the studio guy keep coming in your session talking about some, hey, you know you got five minutes left, right? Yeah. Why you why you recording? It's like, bro, you keep stopping me from trying to get through the shit. <laughs> That's a perfect. Yeah, man. Like, and he he wouldn't like that. So it's like, bro, come on, man. Let me let me do what I got to do until it's time for you to get on. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like two sides of the story, and it man. Like, and it's like disrespectful to the artist that's up there too. Right. That's what that's what really triggered me. While I was like, man, fuck this shit. Cause right. Because like, I'm like, yo, you independent. Right. Like, all everybody here independent. Right. Like. Like, that's just disrespectful. Like, I ain't gonna let you disrespect someone the way that I wouldn't let someone disrespect you. Facts. So, like, like, I'm good. Right. But yeah, man, like, that's, oh, man, we can we go for hours on, on, on stories from all these nights and shit. <laughs> man, can I? I try to forget them, for real. Yeah. <laughs> we being honest, I try to forget them. Oh, uh, man, so let people know, um, you know, how they can tap in with you and, and get involved with the um, next uh, Meet the Underdogs uh, event and, like, some of the stuff that you, you're you playing along with. The- okay, yeah, no, for sure. Um, the easiest way is just to submit your music to our website, agency333.com. That's the link in our bio at Meet the Underdogs on Instagram. Um, or you can go to our business Instagram, the333 Agency. Um, yeah, just submit to our website, bro. We listen to the music and go from there. All right. So, I appreciate you coming out, man. Yes, sir. All right. We out. <laughs>